If you were to tell me just five years ago that I could get this footage from a phone, I would have thought you were pulling my leg. But here we are with ProRes log footage recorded on the iPhone 15 Pro. And my first impressions? Pretty goddamn mind blowing. What's happening, y'all? It's your boy Sean Alami. I hope whatever you are, you're doing fantastic. Here we are again with a brand new iPhone launch, and yet I'm making another video specifically tailored for filmmakers. We all know that Apple's been trying to sell us that idea that this tool right here is a cinematic tool that we could use as our perhaps second camp. And it's fair to say, as filmmakers, we've danced along with that idea so far. I personally pushed the iPhone 13 Pro and the 14 Pro to its limits, and I never considered it as my second camera until now. now. I've had this phone for the past few days, and as someone who's been exploring smartphone filmmaking on this channel since the iPhone 13 Pro, I've naturally become curious about the process of growth of this technology. And after two years of experience, I've learned how to push these phones to the limits, taking them into uncharted territory, into deep waters, if you will, and that is exactly what I did with the iPhone 15 Pro. Well, you might be asking me how. Well, I decided to film at night, where it's completely dark, where there is an ounce of ambient or fill light to come to the rescue to this sensor. Because usually that's when these cameras tend to bend the knee. That being said, I went ahead and introduced my own lights so I can portray a cinematic look to these shots. Now you saw the footage at the beginning, but I want to go through some of the accessories that I used that helped me achieve a more cinematic look, all right? First of all, I was lucky enough to use the free Blackmagic app available for iPhone. And I'm going to go ahead and say this, goodbye to Filmic Pro. This allowed me to have histogram, zebras, and control all the aspects of the camera manually. Super easy to use. I pretty much loved it. And the launch of the app aligned literally with the launch of the iPhone 15 Pro, so I couldn't be more thankful. All right, I wanted to create some cinematic close-ups and I wanted to recreate some movie scenes. So I went over to ShotDeck.com to get some references. This is not sponsored by ShotDeck. I pretty much just love using the website. And the idea I had in mind was capturing some close-ups of my character using the main camera without any crop. However, the problem was that the main camera is 24 millimeter and most of my references were shot at least at 50 millimeter focal length. Lucky for me, Freewell was kind enough to send me a set of new lenses that helped me get a little bit closer to my character. I also filmed these shots with the same exact settings with my Sony a7S III, so I'm gonna be comparing the iPhone 15 Pro footage to the Sony a7S III at the end of this video, so make sure to stay tuned. Now let me quickly go through my setup when I was filming. I was pretty much using just two tube lights and a small RGB pocket light. Why so simple, you might ask me? Well, we were a one-man team on a tight schedule, so I had to keep things simple. I was shooting in log using the Blackmagic app, recording Apple ProRes 444 at 60 frames per second. And surprisingly for the night shots, I could stay under 400 ISO and I ended up having absolutely no noise, which is pretty impressive. Now let me show you quickly how I graded these log footages coming out of the iPhone 15 Pro, right? So I was using a LUT converter that I created for my Sony S-Log3 and to be honest with you, it worked almost perfectly without having to make any adjustments on the log footage coming out of the iPhone 15 Pro. You can grab that LUT in the description of this video. And after that, I added a note for my primaries and I added two parallel notes here, one to control the temperature and the color of the lights and one to control just the skin tones. And after that comes another note for the looks. And I used one of my LUTs from my Cine LUT collections to give it the desired look that I wanted. And my last note, I used the film look from DaVinci LUTs and brought down the intensity, of course, to give it a proper final film look. Out of these shots, I would say I'm especially proud of the bus stop scene. You know, it's incredible how this dark scene turned out really good on an iPhone. And the Oppenheimer shot, 
I added an extra film look using the Film Convert in Premiere Pro. Why Premiere Pro? Well, I'm not paying an extra $60 to have this plugin in Resolve as well. I can pretty much just switch to Premiere Pro. Now, if you want to break down with you on my lighting on these shots, just give me a shout out in the comments and we'll get it done. The only thing that is lacking right now, I would say with the iPhones is the lack of depth of field. The fact that, you know, we cannot shoot ProRes using these lenses and have a nice depth of field without having to use the cinematic mode, which I think has a lot more room to improvement enough for us filmmakers to want to use it in our projects. I mean, you can use it, but it's definitely not comparable with what you get from the ProRes videos. Now I'm absolutely thrilled to create more content with this phone. I'll be going to Munich to shoot a movie trailer with the iPhone 15 Pro. I cannot contain my excitement. I can't wait to see how it turns out and I'm eager to share it to you all. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Before I let you guys go, let's have a look at some of those comparison shots that I promised you between the iPhone 15 Pro and the Sony A7S III.